आपको स्क्रीन दिखाई दे रही है अभी नहीं यस यस सर यस सर दिखाई दे रहा है सर मेरा स्क्रीन आपका पीपीटी नहीं सर अभी नहीं दिखाई दे रहा है अच्छा तो मुझे शेयर करने दीजिए यस सर आई एम मोर यूज टू जूम सो now is it visible now no sir sir in google meet there is a option of present now is and it... yes 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 sir, now it is visible सर्विस स्टार्ट से वेट 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 ओके सर Now is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So let us now begin with the, with the lecture. Okay. All right. Okay. So very good morning, everyone. How many participants are there? Sir, currently forty-eight are connected now, but it will be reached up to the nineties. Uh, meanwhile, in between. Okay. Currently, how many? Forty-eight. Currently, it's a forty-nine, sir. Forty-nine. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. All right. So, okay. yeah. So, first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, you and your team for uh, organizing such a wonderful uh, event. on uh, artificial intelligence and related uh, uh, topics right so today we will be discussing intelligent health monitoring of machines and uh, we will first discuss here uh, the intelligent word i will remove here uh, for a moment and health monitoring of machines we will first understand what is health monitoring of machines and then we will see as to how the intelligent is getting embedded with or added with health monitoring of machines with the help of artificial intelligence right so by now i hope you all of you understand what is artificial intelligence and uh, related stuff so let us first understand the health monitoring of machines all right so health monitoring of when we say health monitoring of machines it this means that we with the help of various uh, sensors and transducers we take the parameters from the machine or of the machine and based on that we get to know as to what is the status or the condition of the machine if the machine is let's say 
is working fine but it is going to go into some state where it is further going to be in trouble in the sense that it is let's say getting into the faulty state so that uh, state has to be avoided with the help of these parameters which we are acquiring through the sensors that we have deployed around the machine or on the machine okay this is exactly same as there are lots of noise so can you please mute all of your mics please uh, yes sir yes sir we are so please mute everyone else's mic yes sir, i am monitoring sir if anyone is uh, unmute uh, we will mute them okay okay sir so this is very interesting study and which we are carrying out for past many years i personally am involved in this study for more than 20 years <clears throat> i worked in industry and uh, i came across such problems where i personally you know deployed some sensors and uh, acquired tried to acquire the the parameters which are helping us which were helping us in monitoring in assessing the condition of the machine regent vijay can you hear me vijay sorry yes sir uh, please mute mute everyone's mic because in between i am getting disturbed okay sir okay sir so you have to mute everyone's mic and then we'll start <clears throat> so now everyone is muted sir no in between uh, unmuting happens so you have you, you should uh, use the don't allow uh, button right and don't allow um, uh, unmuting right so okay sir okay sir okay sir all right so let us uh, continue so Uh, what i was mentioning here is the uh, condition monitoring of machines right this is exactly same as what we do for our health monitoring right many of us when um just feeling like you know little feverish or maybe some pain or maybe something like that and based on that we either take the take some medicine which we are very well acquainted with or maybe we go to the doctor and uh, consult and based on that the doctor suggests that okay you take these medicines and uh, based on that uh, either you you know get well soon or maybe uh, you keep working but that condition could be avoided sometimes even medicine is not needed you are just uh, suggested to take rest and that condition has to be avoided in order to further go on work so this way what we achieve is the we avoid the the break in our daily routine right so we next day we go to work we go to office and that's how we don't have to take either the leave a sick leave or whatever right so uh, what i'm trying to say here is that uh, by just assessing the situation the condition of our health 
whatever it is it is maybe somewhere i am feeling the pain or maybe uh, some some kind of symptom which we feel naturally because our body is with full of sensors right so based on that we assess the condition of our body and if we have any issue or the issue is going to come right we consult the doctor as i mentioned but here the catch is that we keep on working right we are not waiting till the time we get into the breakdown breakdown in the sense that we are admitted either in the hospital or maybe we are taking rest in such a way that we have to take sick leave or maybe some other leave or break in the day to day normal routine so we do we avoid that for avoiding that we have our sensors naturally right and these sensors are helping us in terms are in terms of uh, you know uh, uh, pain as information so this information the pain information we uh, get and uh, maybe either pain or temperature or anything like that right uh, any kind of symptom that we get to know and based on that we take decision now on the same lines what if we have machines so please understand that when we have big machines very expensive machines and especially in big industries where we have thousands of machines such machines big machines right and these machines are working one after another so this means that we are in a situation where if any machine in the process goes into the breakdown the next step is getting affected and that will badly hamper the productivity of that industry right an industry is nothing but it is an entity which is it is basically an economic entity right or i would say a system which does some economic activity in order to increase the productivity right or it is an economic activity i would say right so when we say economic activity it means any industry which is doing economic activity uh, i mean industry has to do economic activity so any industry has to have some profit generation please understand without profit there is no industry so the for, uh, the foremost aim is for any industry is to generate profit if the industry is not generating profit the industry is not industry industry will not survive right so for any industry the profit is must and profit is based on what profit is based on the productivity see the market normally is very competitive and if a particular industry is not making profit not having better productivity will not survive in the competition in the market so industry especially big industries they all are involved in finding the mechanism and the planning in such a way that the, in these industries are putting all its force in order to increase the productivity increase its productivity so that is what is very important to be understood so this is an area where industries have now been putting very much stress so that the machines before going into the breakdown you know can be corrected can be brought into the normal state and this way these industries would save lot of 
break down time not only the money but break down time and by doing this the productivity which was already planned will not get affected please understand so this way and please understand that this is very helpful where this is helpful in this is very helpful in big industries when i say big industries it means the industries where we have number of machines right and uh, normally the machines are huge in terms of its investment right so this means that the machines that we are targeting for condition based monitoring has lots of investment right and that's how we cannot afford to go these machines into the breakdown now you see here the cost benefit analysis so what i have said just now that uh, big industries they are striving for sustaining its productivity uh, in order to increase the profit uh, again that will help the industries to sustain in the competitive market right so condition based monitoring itself takes some investment requires some investment in terms of technology in terms of uh, manpower so all of these basically involves some some revenue on all of these uh, involves some cost right this means that we have to put in some some money into some uh, uh, some money as investment right in order to monitor or manage the machines in the maintenance department right so every big industries you see have a uh, uh, maintenance department where this cost benefit analysis will justify that okay otherwise maintenance department in classical terms what they do they whenever machines go into the breakdown they will come and they will rectify they will find the fault and based on that fault they will you know take the decision and they will take the machines into the breakdown rectify return it to the production department so that's what is the normal uh, routine normal process that is followed by any industry uh, maintenance department okay what i mentioned here in terms of the condition based monitoring this has to be avoided see our aim here is to avoid breakdown time and if we can avoid this breakdown time as i just mentioned that we can add on towards the productivity we can afford to have better productivity in order to sustain in the market which is very very competitive especially for big industries so once the technology is there and let's say you know uh, big industries are there investments are huge here also it's not very huge but yes it's a significant amount of investment so nobody would invest for this condition based monitoring unless one feels that this is going to give us better return so you know there is a cost based uh, you know uh, cost benefit um, based analysis so cost benefit analysis uh, was done uh you can go through various literatures on this uh, uh return on investment analysis for condition based monitoring here this is popularly known as uh, cost benefit analysis 
so cost benefit analysis helps us to pursue industries to understand that look if you invest some money on uh, condition based monitoring it is going to give you better return or more return than what you are investing and not only more but in manifold right multiple times return then only the industries will get convinced and uh, then they will go for cost uh, this uh, condition based monitoring otherwise they would simply say that okay look whenever the machines will go into the breakdown then we'll see right let the machines go into the breakdown and then we'll go for condition based monitoring so we have uh, done extensive studies on cost based uh, cost benefit based analysis which is known as cost benefit analysis this is also known as return on investment analysis roi and uh, based on this we have come up to the level where we could convince industries that look if you are investing x x amount of money you are going to get as a return this much amount of money after some time so it is exactly like this as i mentioned that when the machines are expensive and in good number it is going to give us better return because the same technology will be applicable to all the machines right although these machines may little bit dif differ in terms of uh, uh, you know its uh, specification but if more or less they are of the same kind right these the same technology will help in managing the condition of these machines so cost benefit analysis helped us in convincing many industries that if you are investing this much amount you are going to get as a return so much or in many fold the return right whatever you have invested so i am just going through these uh, details little bit so so you see we have uh, um, done some research some some work based on the investment and then the uh, return so this is called cost benefit analysis for boeing so boeing industry which is based in america uh, united states of america so where we did extensive studies right taking their machines into consideration right so we took those machines and they have a uh, huge industry right? their industry is like a city right you can take any city here and the industry size is uh, that big right and so now you can think of how, how many machines they would have okay so we have done lots of uh, uh, extensive uh, exercise and then based on that we have analyzed and we found that uh, you know the investment is also the the based on the investment the return is also huge right and this that's how they got convinced so for your reference if you are interested you can just search on the google or maybe other uh, search engines you will find lots of literatures based on the uh, maintenance the cost of the condition based monitoring the cost of uh, sorry the return or uh, use for big industries so uh, here you see the some of the slides that i am showing you that how the cost benefit analysis basically helps us so as i mentioned that normally when we have problems right in machine right so then what is the business impact a loss of revenue and then uh, apart from this loss of revenue we have safety concerns also 
right so let's say we are working with some machine which is a little bit faulty let's say it is not completely faulty but it is going into that zone so then this has a safety hazard also safety risk also right so that is a social concern right many times uh, industries do not spend on machine which has not completely come into the breakdown zone breakdown state so working with those machines there are safety concerns so many industries which are say uh, they don't want to spend uh, money on these uh, they normally allow their uh, workers their technicians to work on the same machines because they feel that there is no problem as sir, long as the machines are sir, working sir. yes please sir sir uh, uh, participants are complaining that ppt is not visible maybe uh, sharing is stopped something is are you not seeing the ppt no sir many uh, my screen the first ppt is only showing and participant has oh. say that ppt is are not visible ppt so can sir uh, it's a good sir uh, reshare the uh, ppts so you are not uh, seeing any ppt or this, uh, nothing you are what what is the screen showing uh, screen uh, nothing is visible to the screen sir oh. only your dp yes sir dp what is dp uh, sir your pick <laughs> pick okay okay let me try this again yes sir but my uh, screen is saying that uh, meet.google.com is sharing your screen okay okay sir sir uh, 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 participant are saying that the first slide is seen since the start no what you are seeing is uh, that is important sir in my screen also the first uh, first ppt is only first slide is only what is written on that uh, verma sir is presenting okay uh, first slide okay. only it is there okay Inter intelligent intelligent health monitoring of machines and artificial framework by verma sir okay but uh, let me let me stop and then reshare okay yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir i am stopping now and uh, let me reshare what is the screen that now you see sir only your uh, your picture is coming only my picture is coming yes sir yes. mera fd pe chal raha hai what is that now you see so again your screen your picture is only only my my picture or any yes, sir, video nothing sir your picture is only my picture and all the participants yes sir participants are looking that is what so my picture and all the participants right yes 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 now this will help me going forward okay so what do you see now so same sir nothing is changed sir you need to share your uh, presentation there is no. option of that i have already done and i am doing that no sir time. here is nothing that's what sir, sir when you presenting is written here that uh, presented by verma sir but now nothing is coming no. see answer my questions whatever i am asking and then okay sir okay sir it will help me right okay sir. so so i am doing this right uh, i have already done and now i am doing present now okay 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 sir okay sir so i am now clicking your entire screen right okay or a window whatever 
विंडो सर विंडो सर विंडो इन विंडो देर विल बी ऑप्शन ऑफ प्रेजेंटेशन पीपीटी टू शेयर द पीपीटी सो ओके फाइन सो इफ आई डू दैट यस सर व्हाट यू सी नाउ यस नाउ नाउ इट्स प्रेजेंटिंग सर नाउ योर पीपीटी इज विजिबल सर द फर्स्ट स्लाइड ओनली second slide third slide now it's oh. going it's okay oh. now sir okay what do you see now in it's a cost benefit analysis in ppt what do you see now sir there is a ppt is written blue there color? cost cost benefit analysis blue color yes sir blue color okay. great so thank you uh, the, now it's working fine yes sir yes sir let us quickly move ahead okay yes sir yes sir so uh, this ppt you have not seen i guess have you seen this ppt yes sir no sir there is only first ppt was there uh, before now okay. it's a uh, yeah. okay so whatever i spoke right on cost benefit analysis now you can relate here so uh, my photograph is visible or not hello yes sir visible photograph is visible sir now it is visible sir okay and the ppt also visible yes sir yes sir yes sir okay good so uh, what i uh, uh, just spoke was this the cost benefit analysis and uh, as i mentioned that we did it for a uh, boeing company right the cost benefit analysis because we had to convince that industry right which has millions of machines please understand millions right not uh, uh, 100 or 1000 or like that millions of machines right so this cost benefit analysis has proved that it is it has a uh, huge return over the investment right so uh this we did for the boeing company us and uh, you see here that the problem in machines will result what faults in machine and then what is a business impact business impact would be the loss of revenue as i mentioned and then safety risks okay and which is i just mentioned that is it would create safety concerns and then again inability to respond to the market demands because market is highly competitive highly competitive right there are other industries if we talk of uh, boeing company which is uh, uh, manufacturing the planes the aeroplanes right and uh, not only the aeroplanes there are some uh, other um space equipments space vehicles and again the uh, war uh, uh, war related um, other aeroplanes right so like f16 f18 right like that so here the issue is that that it is not the only company which is manufacturing this there are other companies like airbus like you know so many other lockheed martin so many companies are involved in similar kind of production so if boeing has to remain in the market and again i mention that since it is a industry it has to make profit It, if it has to sustain so sustaining is important that's why the, if the machines go into the breakdown obviously the production will get affected productivity will get affected and when we say productivity again the profit will get affected and if the profit get uh, gets affected then the share to the you know employees and other 
partners will also get affected so what is the value that we are in return getting here is by employing the uh, condition based monitoring it's the increased safety which is again social concern and then less downtime which would affect the overall productivity then of course the better profit satisfied customer base because if the machines are working fine you will be able to deliver your products which you have promised right so jo uh, uh, on time so uh, basically the customer base will be very happy very satisfied if it is delivered the products are delivered either on time or before time so that's how it goes right and uh, when we talk of maintenance what is maintenance basically is it it helps us in maximizing the production by reducing the downtime and then minimizing the energy uses right the energy consumed for producing certain item will definitely be lesser if the machines are not under the breakdown why because machines are always uh, in use many times and uh, if uh the you know the preceding machines let's say goes into the breakdown even when the next machines succeeding machines are um, uh, in better state they have they are all of no use right because the product that has to be uh, that has to reach to this machine has not come yet because of the machine that uh, was supposed to uh, work on this particular step has not been done so this way maintenance opti uh, optimizes the useful life of equipment as well here this helps in managing optimizing the useful life of equipment because uh, you also would feel that many times if you are not taking care of the machine then the life of the equipment will also go down 012345 0 start kiya ओके सो so yeah so this will help us in managing the budgetary uh, i mean uh, the maintenance budget and other uh, stuff related stuff and uh, then optimizes the resources also like uh, inventory and other items uh, so this uh, what maintenance gives us is uh, the reduced breakdowns reduced uh, uh, downtime and then this improves the overall equipment efficiency and uh, it improves the inventory uh, like the investment in the inventory will be lesser as compared to the normal time and then uh, again the it uh, uh, you know finally it reduces the overall cost and you see it maximizes the profit so let me just tell you that when we talk of maintenance let us now look at the types of maintenance that we normally practice in our industries so you see the maintenance the that we have here is normally of two kinds right you see the preventive maintenance when we say preventive maintenance this means the maintenance which uh, is carried out before the breakdown comes so this is possible only when you have you have you are monitoring please understand if you are not able to monitor the machine right then how how do you know what needs to be done a priori so this maintenance which is called a preventive maintenance is 
done before the machine goes into the breakdown please understand so when we say monitoring this means what the condition based monitoring in short we say cbm condition based monitoring so what we do here in preventive maintenance is we first use the sensors we deploy sensors transducers and all based on that we monitor the condition of the machine and the the technology that we use for this is cbm now another kind of preventive maintenance that normally is carried out is periodic maintenance or time based maintenance this is also called periodic so here you see we have periodic maintenance as well so after certain period we keep uh, uh, you know uh, maintaining we even when the machines are faulty or not we either on week day, weekly or monthly or it depends upon the machine the kind of machine that we have so we do this kind of maintenance we open the machine and uh, we do the needed it is exactly same as uh, you know we send our cars for uh, service right so uh, you see this is time bound like when we buy a new car uh, we get a booklet and in that it is mentioned right that okay after this much time the first service will happen then second time and this service will happen and like that the second service third service fourth service and so on right so that is just to avoid any issues that is going to occur in case right so that is what is the periodic so say on the same lines industries also do the periodic test periodic service right and this is called time based maintenance but there are issues of this see like there are issues everywhere so in condition based monitoring or maintenance when we talk we have investment you see investment this is not free investment so nobody wants to invest on unnecessary you know on anything but if one sees that okay there is uh, invest uh, return on this investment then uh, you know people would go for this industries would go for it so here we have the investment you see in time based maintenance we don't have any investment right we just open the machine i mean employ some people and uh, we open all the machine but here issues that are noticed are bigger right so what are those issues many times what happens the machines when you open the other parts get, get affected right the uh, the uh, machines that you dismantle right many times they require new items right new ceiling new uh, you know parts or maybe sometimes these parts get some wear and tear right or maybe uh, they may not be uh, uh, fitted the way it was initially so that's how this time based maintenance also is not very helpful many times right and what what was the classical way of doing this classical way was the breakdown maintenance it is like you have a car and whenever the machine whenever the car goes into the breakdown we'll see and uh, what is the issue here of course you don't have to pay for the service you don't have to pay for anything but let's say you are you have started from somewhere let's say uh, sonbhadra to uh, lucknow and in between your car is under breakdown and then you don't have anybody to help you right so this is just the example right so and then and uh, there you call the mechanic and you uh, mechanic comes and then he says okay uh, this part is broken uh, this is the pro and you then you use you you uh, uh, invest use money right that that will whatever money uh, is to be uh, spent you have to spend because you don't have any choice 
the, your car is under breakdown right you just want your car to take to your place right so that's how you don't have any any say here you immediately have to have uh, you have to uh, spend that much money so what happened here you invest you you spend more money number one number two that you that is even more dangerous that is even more uh, expensive is the time right you were let's say going to lucknow for some work and in between you are stopped and you are not able to go because your car came under the breakdown unless the uh, car uh, gets corrected right it is under the normal condition uh, you are not able to move so under this condition what happened whatever work for which you are going gets affected right or you may come into some dangerous situation like uh, if you are not uh, your car is not performing properly yeah you know there may be some accident as well depends what kind of uh, um, fault uh, is there so that's how the breakdown maintenance is not very very helpful breakdown maintenance is uh, not a good uh, maintenance uh, scheme right so you see now you must have realized that the initially classical way of maintaining was the breakdown and then you see uh, people have gone for time based and then here you see the condition based monitoring now if i again take the example of car here right like i have a car and i drive my car and then based on the either the uh, the acoustics or maybe vibration i sense that my car has some issue even when the um, we go for the time based maintenance and many times that happens right uh, we notice that there is something wrong in the car then before it goes further into the issues right in future we immediately take this car to the mechanic or maybe the service center and then this we get corrected and this way we avoid major issue right so this is what uh, how uh, uh, this maintenance different kind of kinds of maintenance we have and then uh, under these uh, maintenance right preventive maintenance corrective maintenance we have further the comparisons right and then here we find that condition based monitoring is really helpful now comes the investment right because investment is the major uh, issue because if we are not uh, uh, you know investing uh, in the technology here then we will not be able to manage basically the uh, uh, the condition based monitoring okay so let us let us now go to the cost benefit analysis which helps us in you know uh, convince us that yes you should go for it okay so let us quickly go through this and see that what motivates us right so this is what you see here as the percentages of operating industries after four years and that's how they are getting you know the return so different kinds of industries after certain time uh, used to get different kinds of returns right so this is what uh, we just saw and uh, you see here that now there is another type of maintenance that has added here so initially we saw that we had the preventive maintenance and corrective maintenance now there is another maintenance another kind of maintenance that has been added is predictive maintenance right this is what i am talking about this is where the role of ai comes right so role of ai comes here it predicts that the machine the car whatever is going to go into the breakdown after this much period 
So when I come to know this, I immediately take my car, take my machine, right, uh, and uh, get this corrected before anything happens, right. So this preventive is part of this also, right. So please understand that this predictive maintenance is very popular nowadays, and uh, you see. Uh, these are the uh, kind of uh, machineries, the, uh, the maintenance mach of machineries that we have already discussed, right? So I'm not going into the detail. Here is the formulation. I'm not going to discuss this in the detail because you can get this uh, on the web. I, either my website, uh, complete literature is available. Yes. Uh, I would like to just give you the path. So uh, here there are parameters that are impacting the revenue right the profit right so here the formulation we have suggested right and uh, after lots of uh, studies and uh, you know uh, findings uh, through various scenarios we have uh, suggested that you see uh, this is how uh, how much uh, return you could get and this has been uh, various uh, the reference of various literatures you can see here Similarly, all of these are the formulations that have been suggested, right? So I'm just going through these slides just to show you what basically uh, we have done. So when we have taken some machine for our, uh, you know, uh, just to prove that what we are suggesting, we have taken air compression and then we have found that CVM right initial the you see here i i told you that it has more uh, investment right so let's say for this machine we have to invest ten thousand dollars and uh, you see uh, for tbm right the time-based management right and then the corrective maintenance we don't have to invest initially anything right similarly uh, tbm let's say it has some investment because there is time time based you have to have some uh, a team which basically takes care of the machines period periodically. So here the investment is of course very less. But then what happens when we use these three these three strategies? So we see that here over period of time, right? You see the months here. So uh, in even a single month, right? Even in one year we see the profit rising. Right? And we, have, we, we see the comparison here. So similarly, just think of a machine which has the life of 10 years. So we see that this is how, and this is for the single machine. Think of the scenario where we have, uh, you know, more, uh, uh, the number of hours more uh, in terms of its running, right? So in those cases you see let's say you have millions of machine you see now you can think of how much uh, profit gets affected just because of this strategy of maintenance so please understand that uh, as to how we are basically uh, getting affected right and uh, just this cost benefit analysis helps us in convincing the the maintenance right like the the kind of maintenance the condition based maintenance right why one should go for this like why the industries should go for this strategy okay so before doing this we all know why should we do this so this actually helps us in understanding through the profit i told you that every industry is more every industry's first and foremost motive is to generate profit they are not doing anything for free they will do any activity for generating profit right so profit generation you know the increase in the profit or I would say, th because this is through productivity. So industries do not leave any stone unturned for profit generation. 
so if they have to invest some money on something they would first look for the return and we see that we have taken a single machine and we take we took various case studies where various uh, you know scenarios various conditions and we showed that as to how the profit generation gets affected through the maintenance strategy maintenance is very very important area which normally you know we, uh, in uh, earlier times there were people not caring of because it is exactly the same like if we are our health is fine then we will be able to work if our health is not uh, fine then of course we will have more breakdowns right so exactly the same uh, same is for the machines please understand i am talking of those machines which are very expensive let's say a machine's cost is a million dollar now let's say uh, it's 5 6 7 7 crore right or more many times right think of an example of uh, f16 that is also a machine that should not go into the breakdown right we whenever is it is needed it has to be uh, in the correct uh, state in the in the desired state so we cannot afford to have the, these machines go into the breakdown you must have heard yesterday right the uh, an aeroplane um, i i i don't know whether it was aeroplane or helicopter what crashed in azamgarh right so uh, there must have been some issue maybe i don't know what was the issue but uh, definitely when these machines are designed they are designed for uh, uh, you know working under very rigorous uh, 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 conditions, climatic conditions, and weather conditions. Right. So I'm really not convinced whether the weather was not very good, but maybe who knows what was the problem? Unless the investigation report comes out. So I uh, myself uh, understand that this way uh, is like there may have been some control issues. There may have been some sensor related issues. and that's how it was not performing well and that costed the whole uh, aircraft or helicopter uh, into crash and not only that the pilot was also died sir excuse me sir yes sir, sir again there is a technical problem your ppt is again gone you have to again share your ppt actually somebody had shared this in presentation so mr satyam kumar has somebody has shared the presentation so kindly again share it so that we can move it so my my presentation is not visible it's not yes sir yes, sir uh, sir you have to again share your ppt that's all why is it happening so some participant participant mistakenly shared their screen that's why it happened so in google meet we have this problem that uh, anybody can share the screen so that is a problem no but as an administrator you don't have the right to no, share actually actually say in google google meet na there is a option that any participant can share their screen that's why no but the when when somebody allows right the administrator allowed then only it should be so this option is not available in google meet it's no problem. problem no problem that's fine so i think this was the problem uh, for the first time also yes sir so should i re reshare yes sir yes sir yes sir is it coming now yes sir yes sir it's coming uh, what is the time till which i have to speak sir sir the first session is uh, till 11:30 till 11:30 right yes sir and the second session 
12 to 12 okay. okay all right so we were here now is it visible yes sir yes sir okay great so uh, yeah let us continue our study now and uh, our discussion on this study now so uh, i hope it was very convincing to you that why should we study why should we uh, go for condition based monitoring right now once we have convinced now comes how this condition based monitoring is done so you see here in the beginning you know uh, before doing anything first we take the machine which has to be uh, monitored whose condition is monitored so we first find out the position where your sensor has to be placed where your sensor has to be deployed if we do not know where i am going to place my sensor where i am going to deploy my sensor then what we will do we will place our sensor anywhere right wherever we feel this may not be a, a correct place so if we place the sensor that may not be of any use because this sensor may not be taking the right information comparative to the condition of the machine right with respect to the condition of its machine please understand right so that is very important to be understood that uh, once right so so please understand that this sensitive position is very important if this sensitive position is known so when, when we say sensitive position this means this sensitive to the information that we want to pick right so please understand that this sensitive position is very important it it is exactly same as our you know he, you know heart monitoring right let's say we want to monitor the heart right like we want to uh, when you visit that doctor the doctor uh, takes the stethoscope and puts that is is stethoscope where near the heart does he do this or not yes he put the stethoscope near the heart because he wants to know the uh, condition of the heart whether the heart is pumping in the right pace or not right so like that we we should know for machines also it should not be like if we want to monitor the heart and we place the stethoscope at the leg somewhere right if we do that no matter how uh, what is the rate of the heart right and what heart is doing we will not be able to know right so uh, the putting or deploying the stethoscope at the leg will not help us much please understand all right so this way we before anything before we start this condition based monitoring we have to first understand the places where we need to deploy the sensors for example and these sensors could be depending upon the parameters that we want to pick for example temperature for vibration accelerometer for acoustics maybe microphone or acoustic sensors so all of these sensors basically takes the comparative information right take the information comparative to the condition of the uh, machine right or with a reflex uh, with a, with a respect to the condition of the machine and based on that it they these uh, sensors give us the signals normally these signals are analog signals right so uh, when we have done this we first find 
the positions where we can deploy the sensors here many people make the mistake because they don't know the right place and they place the sensor anywhere and then they try to monitor the condition of the machine so that will not be of much help right so sensitive position is very important when we say sensitive this means that the position which is sensitive for that particular state and when it is sensitive this means that is going to give us better information right so sensitive position is very very important then comes the data acquisition as i mentioned that the sensors uh, capture the signals right comparative to the condition so these signals normally are analog signals right and what we want to analyze these signals where on the computer right so we want to take this to computer so for that what we will be doing is we will acquire the data into the computer so we should have a data acquisition system and this data acquisition system basically helps us in taking the analog signal and if it is weak signal we have to amplify it right and then since we are converting the analog signal into the digital signal in between we have to do many steps first step is the right sampling then quantization right and then we should use you know uh, right kind of uh, you know uh, the digitization the, the where we fit the resolution right so uh, this data acquisition does what it basically takes the analog signal and it takes the signal in the digital form to our computer so when we have reached to this stage we have uh, taken the signal the analog signal which is coming from the sensitive position right from the signal from the sensor right uh, which are deployed at the sensitive position right and uh, again this uh, sensitive position is around the machine only right w with which we would like to work so uh, once all these are done then comes what the pre processing see whatever signal whether it is a, even if it, even when it is a digital format right this basically is getting pre processed because this signal is a raw signal right this is not the uh, this is not a complete signal this is not the signal which uh, can directly be used because this may contain some noise uncertainties and other stuff which may not be desired right and that if we directly use will create lots of issues in terms of the accuracy right so we would always wish to have better signal before we move forward so we use here certain filters right and other things right uh, other related uh, stuff so uh, if we want to go into the detail we have the complete literature available if you are interested you go to my website and you will find all related literatures available there and uh, the, I, if that is not available then you the link may be provided you can directly go to ieee transactions and those ieee transactions you can download and you can move forward so you see here once uh, this pre processing is done then comes the feature extraction because here the signal that we acquire may be may be uh, uh, you know in terms of uh size it may be very big so the direct signal we never use because if the signal that we have we have acquired let's say this has uh normally 250 kilo samples per second right of course it is here uh, at this stage you know the sampler that we have is 250 kilo samples per second right which is a huge data for let's say two second data will be very huge or maybe five second data will be too huge so here we'll first decide for down sampling whether we should 
uh, what kind of uh, rate that we should need for our study right so we go for down sampling right so please understand that uh, we decide here that whether we should go for down sampling and if we go for the down sampling then with what rate so that the signal that we need right the information that we need is preserved right it should not be uh, like you know okay you whatever the way you decide and then you just sample no if you sample uh, with any arbitrary uh, sampling rate then you may lose the signal information which will be important for further study so feature extraction basically is again a very important step so here what we do we get a uh, normally here at this stage you see here at this stage we get the analog signal here we get what the digital signal right uh, we convert this and here we further uh, pre process and get better signal right with, with uh, more information content now when we talk of features right so the, the sensors that we uh, deploy here let's say we have sensors here right sub sensors so these sensors uh, when these are at sensitive position they get the analog data right so here we have analog data you see analog data and, and when we say analog normally it is you know in time domain so here also we have the signal till time domain right but now when we when it comes to feature extraction right so then we from the analog signal we basically try all kinds of transformation so it could be uh, your time domain factors right it could be frequency it could be what the time and frequency whatever time frequency so that is called weblet right so it, it it is up to you or it is up to the need in which domain we want the whole signal and analyze it so we find certain transformation or maybe we don't uh, go for transformation we can directly take the uh, uh, the factors right the the uh, in time domain itself and here we have lots of uh, time domain or frequency domain or time frequency domain features so we have multiple features available here now the question comes what to do next whether we should go for go with all the features or we should select some salient features and move ahead in order to reduce the computational complexity because we want the results also quickly we want the faults uh, or the condition of the machine to be uh, you know uh, identified immediately right in order to take the action so all these features are basically you know here uh, ranked suitably so here what happens is we rank the features so we call the ranking of features and there are certain algorithms like uh, uh, the very basic algorithm is uh, principal component analysis and similarly we have so many other algorithms like isa mutual inform a set of mutual information uh, based analysis of feature extractions feature selections so these features and now deep learning is also uh, coming in to select features right so feature selection is a very important uh, step again like any other step so this feature selection ranks all of the uh, features that have been extracted here this step and when it has uh, ranked all those features then we want, we pick only top features some number of top features to move forward right we don't take all the features together because that some of the features may not be contributing positively right 
So we only look at the positive features, look at the most salient features, right? So uh, because otherwise the results, overall result may get deteriorated, overall identification, recognition, uh, accuracy will get affected badly. So the feature selection is a very important process where the ranking of the features which are uh, found through feature extraction process and then some of the features depending upon our you know need and depending upon the resources that we have we take to the suitable classifier and this classification is performed either by svm support vector machine or maybe any other uh, ai agent based classifier right AI agent based classifier, maybe neural network, maybe fuzzy, uh, fuzzy classifier, fuzzy rule classifier, or maybe some probabilistic classifier. So whatever classifiers that we use, uh, you know, uh, will do the same job, but of course the performance could be different. Okay. So this is how the the recognition the condition based monitoring process is carried out and uh, these are basically the building blocks so if we are moving forward for condition based monitoring we have to follow this process so you see uh, we started this study uh, much before and initially we we experimented with the phase one so in phase one what we did we had a crude uh, desktop computer and uh, uh, n number of sensors around the machine we deployed and we never know what is uh, the most salient uh, location or position around the machine we just deployed the sensors right and uh, these sensors were causing lots of uh, issues in terms of the complexity in terms of you know adding the uncertainty into the machine into the uh, the uh, overall uh, processing right so this is what it looked like you see uh, i'm just trying to open this phase one here right So this is phase one. So you see, we took the air compressor and this air compressor, right? We deployed uh, accelerometers and microphone. So this accelerometer and microphones helped us in uh, picking the information, picking the signal. And then uh, for that, we use data acquisition uh, to convert into the digital format and then again you see the same pre-processing came into picture uh, as the one of the building blocks and then these features were extracted from the pre-processed signal and when we have done this then finally we ranked the features and selected few features for for recognition and this tells us what the this recognized whether the machine is uh, faulty or healthy and even if it is healthy it is at what state better state uh, than yesterday or not so like that it does then now let us discuss the second stage where this is called phase two so in phase two, uh, as I mentioned in phase one, it was overall a very crude kind of uh, study, right? We started with this, and here the we find we we try to find the sensitive positions and making the system uh, which is complete in itself to do the fault diagnostics, right? Like uh, we. Uh, number one, we minimize the number of sensors also because when we know that uh, uh, what is the better 
uh, best position or better position for placing the sensor, we can quickly reduce the number of sensors unnecessarily we are putting it around the machine. So uh, based on that, we could quickly uh, move to a single sensor, which was even inbuilt when we say a, uh, when we need a microphone as a sensor for picking up the acoustics or maybe the uh, the audio uh, audio signals, right? So since here a microphone could be very well used for picking up the acoustic uh, acoustic emissions of the uh, compressor. So under this study, you see here. Under this study, we carried out, we minimized the number of sensors and, not, and based on this study of sensitive positions. Right? So this helped us very much. And then you see the phase two here, where instead of computer, we have a palm top computer. Palm top is very small and the sensor also is inbuilt here. So inbuilt sensor, inbuilt microphone. as sensor for picking signals from air compressor. So that is what we did, right? And you see here the air compressor, then the pumped up inbuilt microphone and then pumped up data acquisition module and then you see here uh, this was everything is on uh, palm top and then uh, the size also was very like a palm as the name itself suggests the size was palm, palm of palm so pre-processing right uh, pre-processing then further everything was done here nothing else right so please understand that lots of miniaturizations we have done based on that and uh, next step that we moved here you see the phase three where even palm top was replaced by the cell phone a cell phone so even palm top was replaced and you see it was the time uh, around 2013-14 then even uh, the cell phone were also not very uh, very powerful but we were able to run all the uh, related uh, algorithms for uh, you know all the steps that we discussed right so the same was and then here we were able to manage with better accuracy again because lots of uh, insensitive information unuseful information we were able to filter out right so this is how we moved forward now we when we talk of phase four when we have done all these then uh, 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 we noticed a very interesting uh, scenario very 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 interesting condition of these machines what were those conditions were basically uh, when we were analyzing the signals right under various conditions so even when the condition remains the same let's say machine is perfectly all right even then there used to be a change in the properties of the signal right when we say properties means the features of the signal right? like uh, time domain signals are also changing uh, uh, and not only time domain if we go for the frequencies also changing, time frequencies also changing, then it was very difficult to uh, know whether the machine is uh, really uh, giving us the right signal or not many times that happened. So what really what needed was to get to know some feature which is not changing under the same condition. When we say under the same condition means if the machine is perfectly all right, why should it give us the signal? Why should it give us the parameter which is changing? Right? If it is 
changing its uh, values the parameter is changing its values the feature is changing its values then how will come to know whether the machine is under the same condition so that was really the challenge and then we moved forward and we developed our own feature transformation right the feature system which could help us in managing this situation and our factors our our measures that we suggested right these were not changed so this was a very very interesting study basically right where we could manage to uh, do this study with lots of features and none of the features were helping us then we moved to develop our own feature and this is called feature level visual analysis right so here we develop some factors some some other transforms i would say based on certain features and this uh, particular study has been reported in ieee transactions and reliability so and that that the details are already there on my website so if you are interested you can go and see as to how this study has been carried out and what what is the performance and how is it performing how the whole process has been carried out so this is very important the study and you see there is the latest uh, technology and this is has been patented also so uh, this is very interesting uh, uh, feature uh, extract uh, feature extraction and uh, scheme which helps us in uh, managing that that problem otherwise all the features were not supporting they keeps on changing so that's what was the major finding here in phase 4 uh, uh, and this was carried out in 2016 and since then lots of other developments have happened so this uh, so so far what we have come to know we now have some idea of condition based monitoring and we now know as to what is the process what are the steps through which we move forward for final recognition of the fault or final uh, uh, you know condition of the machine and then various uh, steps and the various issues and how did we tackle these issues right so since the time of this session is going up i will stop here and in the next step we'll discuss as to how we make this the prognosis right or i would say the these steps intelligent with the help of artificial intelligence all right so thank you very much for patient hearing and in the next session we will discuss the intelligent word that will be adding to condition based monitoring uh, thank you sir sir some uh, questions are there uh, participants are asking if you allow uh, may i speak those questions yeah, maybe we can discuss in the next session because this session is ending and i have a meeting actually so i i will okay okay. To... okay okay sir no, no problem okay, okay. all these uh, questions we'll discuss when we we'll uh finish this okay sir okay is sir is that okay yes sir yes sir okay sir okay. so we'll take up all the questions no issue okay sir okay sir okay sir thank you very much so we'll meet at what time 1 o'clock oh, oh 12 o'clock 12 o'clock sir okay thank okay. you okay sir